أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا أقسم بهذا البلد وأنت حل بهذا البلد ووالد وما ولد لا ذلك ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإنها من تقوى القلوب كي قرآنِ خاکِ گزر کی قسم اس کفِ پاکی حرمت پہ لاکھو سلام مصطفیٰ جانِ رحمت پہ لاکھو کھو سلام شمع بزم ہدایت پہلا کھو سلام وچ بکی دے نجدیاں مسمار جو کی تے مزار وچ بکی دے نجدیاں مسمار جو کی تے مزار برک آسی آکھ دا اونا مزاراں نو سلام برق آسی آکھ دا اونا مزاراں نو سلام اے عرب دی سرزمین تیریاں بہاراں نو سلام اے عرب دی سرزمین تیریاں بہارانو سلام اے عرب دی سرزمین تیریاں بہارانو سلام تیرے میدانا پہاڑا تیرے گزارانو سلام تیرے میدانا پہاڑا تیرے گزارانو سلام وچ بکی دے دفن جتنے ہیڑ اصحاب رسول وچ بکی دے دفن جتنے ہیڑ اصحاب رسول او نسبنا عاشقان ستر ہزاراں نو سلام او نسبنا عاشقان ستر ہزاراں نو سلام
city built on the profits of the frankincense trade. Known today as Old Najran, these are its ruins. I'll go and explore. Yes. See you in a bit. The city was built before the advent of Christianity and Islam, and ancient pagan symbols adorn many of the buildings. Its strategic position on the frankincense trail made it a target for religious missionaries and for raiders. For hundreds of years, this was a peaceful Christian city, but a Jewish Himyar tribe from Yemen changed its fortune forever. There's a legendary city mentioned in the Quran called al uqdud and some Saudi experts believe that this may have been it. And if it was, then it was the scene in 524 AD of the most horrific massacre. The city was besieged and the Christian citizens given the most horrendous choice, convert to Judaism or die. They chose death and over 20,000 of them perished in a pit of fire. Travelling north from Mecca, the traders entered the most tightly controlled territory of their route. These are the ruins of Madin Salah. The people who lived here ensured the safe passage of the trade caravans in return for large taxes, which made them exceedingly wealthy. It was established about 200 BC by a tribal group called the Nabataeans, and their rise and fall almost exactly matches the height and decline of those overland trade routes. But as ever, it's not the houses of the living that tell the tale, but the houses of the dead. remains of the great city are 131 private tombs. Their elaborate facades stand testament to the great wealth that frankincense brought to the region. When archaeologists first started working here, this room was absolutely full of sand and none of these stone benches were visible. But it's believed that this was some sort of um, meeting house, somewhere that important members of the town would meet to discuss affairs of state or probably religious issues as well because this entrance down here, which is staggering, this natural break in the rock led to the most holy area of the city and along the walls you can see these little niches carved out, little places for the local deities. And there's centuries of inscriptions and graffiti, some in Aramaic, some in modern day Arabic, charting the journeys that thousands and thousands of people must have taken through here. And just imagine, you've come on your caravan all the way from Oman, and all you want to do is thank your gods for your safe passage thus far, and to pray that you'll be able to continue your journey unharmed, and get lots of money for those precious goods that you are carrying. And what I love about this place is... It may have been a religious centre for the Nabataeans, but they were incredibly democratic and they knew that the people that came here that had brought them their wealth would also want to worship their gods. So what they did here was the niche in the rock there, you can see is empty. And what they could do is bring their own little deities, put them in that niche and worship them, which is just, I think, the most lovely idea that anyone could come here and it would, it would be meaningful to them. And what a place to worship. And what a place to worship. And what a place to worship.